We're going to continue on with our uh, introduction to electrical and computer engineering by moving now into the sinusoidal steady state, or analyzing circuits that involve resistors, capacitors, and inductors that are driven by sinusoidal sources. My name is Lee Brinton. I'm an electrical engineering instructor at Salt Lake Community College. We're going to start this discussion with a review of complex numbers. I find that... Um, Electrical engineers use complex numbers just a little bit differently than we teach them, than, than are typically taught in college algebra and trig classes. So we're going to start out with just going back to remembering where complex numbers come from. We'll review rectangular and polar forms of complex numbers. We'll introduce to you, I think for many of you, it'll be the first time, the complex exponential form of a, of a complex number. And then we'll use some, or we'll go through some uh, example calculations to show how these different forms make certain types of calculations easier than doing those same calculations in other forms. First of all, where do complex numbers come from? Well, probably the easiest, or at least an easy way to, to see it is to, to look at the graph of the function y equals x squared minus 1. It's simply a parabola dropped down one unit. You could say, well, what are the x-intercepts there. Well, to find the x-intercepts, you, of course, set the equation or the function y equal to 0 and solve for x. So we have x squared minus 1 equals 0. Add 1 to both sides, and you get x squared equals 1. And take the square root of both sides, and you get x equals plus or minus 1. So sure enough, the x-intercepts are at plus or minus 1. Well, now, let's change this function to uh, simply changing this minus sign to a plus sign. And we can then do the same kind of calculations. Now, obviously, there's no y, uh, no x-intercepts here. Nonetheless, we can still set y equal to 0 and try and solve for x. We have x squared plus 1 equals 0. Subtract 1 from both sides gives us x squared equals minus 1. Now take the square root of both sides and we go x equals, hmm, we're looking for a number that when multiplied by itself equals negative 1, and in the real number system we all know there is no such number. There's no number that when multiplied by itself equals negative 1 in the real number system. Well, that's not very satisfactory. There's got to be a solution just because we change the sign from minus to plus and all of a sudden we don't have solutions, now there's got to be a solution. So we define, or we invented, the solution to that equation. We called it i. So we have x then is equal to plus or minus i, where i then equals, is defined as, so let's make a third line there, i is defined as the square root of negative 1. Now, in electrical engineering, i is typically used to represent current, and so electrical engineers say, well, let's let j equal i, or j then is equal to the square root of negative 1. Thus, we have this new type of number. It's called an imaginary number. Rather an unfortunate f choice of terms from my perspective, because it's no more imaginary than the real numbers, but uh, you get my point. They're they're numbers that exist, just not in the real number system. In fact, we're going to show that we need to introduce a new domain. To do so, or we not, not no, I mean we already introduced a new domain. It's known as the imaginary number line, and we can plot imaginary numbers on a number line just like we can plot real numbers on a real number line. Now, it becomes a little bit more interesting when we look at this equation. Now, what we've done is we've shifted the parabola off of its we shifted the axis of symmetry of the parabola off of the y-axis over a distance of two units to the right. Let's take this and set that equal to zero. We have x minus minus two quantity squared plus one equals zero. Whoops, where'd my one go? Plus one equals zero. Subtract one from both sides, we get x minus two squared equals negative 1. Take the square root of both sides, we get x minus 2 equals plus or minus i. x then equals 2 plus i, and x equals 2 minus i. Now we have x representing not a pure real number, not a pure imaginary but number, but a combination of the two. And when you've got a real number and or plus an imaginary number, we call that a complex number. And as we know, 
when solving equations that involve real numbers, real coefficients, that lead to imaginary solutions, those solutions come as complex conjugates. X plus I, I'm sorry, 2 plus I and 2 minus I are said to be conjugates of each other because they differ only by the sign on the imaginary uh, on the imaginary part of the number.